Hi everyone, I'm Max. Welcome to Out Spec Guide. Today I want to give you a quick primer for getting set on an EV road trip, regardless of whichever electric car you have. So join me today. We're going to kind of go over a checklist of things you'll want in your car and actually some apps you might want on your phone to get ready for your road trip. But first things first, we have to determine, can your car even road trip? Because I have to be brutally honest here, not every electric car is going to be suitable for road tripping. What do I mean? Well, let's get into it. Let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. So here I have a, a Tesla connector. So if you have a Tesla, the story is pretty simple here. Your car has a Tesla input. There's tons of Tesla chargers around everywhere. All of them can accept what is called rapid charging over direct current. Now, let's say you have a car like the Nissan Leaf, another popular car that uses another standard for accepting rapid charging or direct current called Chadmo. So that is this big boy here. What's that orange smaller connector? Well, that's probably what you're already using to charge your car at home. If it's not a Tesla, if it's a Nissan Leaf or any other brand of electric car, it uses this smaller circular connector called J1772. It's a terrible name, I know. But uh, that small circle connector is what you probably charge your car with overnight, which you're also going to find at a lot of hotels and uh, destination places where you'll be you know, overnight kind of slower charging your car. The more rapid connector on most cars that are not Tesla and aren't the Nissan Leaf is what's called CCS or combined charging system. It combines that circle that's the J1772 with this big chunky pill uh, to get those uh, DC direct connection pins, basically the super rapid charging that just kind of uh, rockets your car, uh, you know, literally, uh, not literally, uh, figuratively to basically charge much quicker. So here's a kind of real world example, BMW i3 with that pin for DC fast charging, that little pill shape underneath the circle there. So if your car just has the circle, um, if it just has this, it doesn't have those pins underneath, I'm sorry, you probably shouldn't road trip it. Uh, and if it's a Nissan Leaf, also, it can road trip, it's not going to be ideal, because Nissan Leafs just tend to charge slower. Also, some cars that do accept this, uh, you know, chunky pin, the CCS standard, also are slow chargers. So that kind of brings me to my next point knowing your vehicle's capabilities. So if it's Tesla, it's fairly standard. They're all kind of DC fast charging capable. They charge relatively quickly. Uh, other cars I mentioned, like the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Bolt are budget earlier electric cars. They have more um, slower charging systems, even over DC or direct current. Then there's cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5, very popular you know, cars on sale today. They're a little higher end, but they have much higher tech charging. They charge with a standard uh, with direct current, but they use 800 volt charging. What does that mean? Well, you can see on Hyundai's site here, they kind of give you a um, list of uh, charging ranges, basically how quickly your car can charge at different stops. So know this for your car. Let's say your car is CCS. It most likely has 400 volt DC charging. This is the most common. Uh, the Nissan Leaf is also somewhere in this neighborhood. So this is where you're going to see uh, 10 to 80 percent in usually half an hour, sometimes a little longer, sometimes even a little shorter if your car can take it. We'll talk a little bit uh, in other videos in this channel about uh, what might affect charging speed. But basically, this is the half hour zone to get from, uh, let's say, 10 percent battery in your car to where you want to be, be at to get to your next stop. Uh, 800 volt like the Hyundai Ionic 5 has is this super new standard. So if your car has it, if it's like an Ionic 5, Porsche Taycan, a lot of high-end cars have this, and it as at the right charger, you're going to see eight, 10 to 80 percent in like half the time potentially of 400 volt because it's double the voltage. So potentially for the Ionic 5, as low as 18 minutes. That's pretty good, but this is an ideal kind of theoretical limit. So just note the capabilities of your car um, because if you use an app like PlugShare. Well, this is where we get into app on your phone. So this is our next checklist item. Uh, and the, now you're going to find out why I mentioned knowing the capabilities of your car, because let's say you use Apple Maps or you use Google Maps, you know, common kind of apps on your phone to route your trip. Totally fine. They're actually going to recommend um, they're going to list chargers for your car, but they don't know what car you have. 
A service like PlugShare, which is a website and an app you can download on your phone, will actually, when you use their route planner, uh, ask you to basically put in your car when you plan a trip. And by inputting your car, the service is going to route you to chargers that are compatible with your car. If you have a Tesla, it's going to get you to Tesla points. If you have a CCS car, it will get you to common big charging networks like Electrify America and ChargePoint. Uh, and if you have a Nissan Leaf, then those same charging networks I mentioned also usually have at least one plug that your car can take. So um, use an app beforehand to kind of at least plan your trip a little bit and find your stops. Uh, and by inputting your vehicle in, you're, you're giving that uh, routing app knowledge of what kind of stops your vehicle uh, can go to. So it'll know basically where best to direct you, uh, the kind of most rapid charging you can get uh, with your specific model of car. But if you're just going to have one app installed on your phone, because every charging network has their own app, and we'll have videos on this channel about how to set up all of those apps, I think the most useful and the most versatile one is ChargePoint. And that's not because of any relationship we have with them. We're not affiliated with any ChargePoint um, provider on this channel. But ChargePoint is just super versatile because they have a lot of their own chargers uh, for DC fast charging, but they also uh, partner with another network called EVGO, who operates their own network. So basically, this one app gives you access to two fairly large networks. Uh, and so what you do is you're going to set up this app on your phone. You're going to set up your billing with it. You'll make an account with them. And then you'll basically have a virtual pass on your phone that can activate any of these chargers. We're going to have a specific video on this channel showing you how to actually get that app working. But ChargePoint is the one app I would recommend above all else if you're just going to have one app on your phone to kind of activate these uh, public chargers on your trip. Then the other most popular network you probably have heard of if you've actually um, been paying attention to electric cars is Electrify America. And this is because uh, Electrify America, will, they've just built a lot of DC fast chargers and a lot of vehicles like let's say Volkswagen ID4 and I believe Hyundai Ioniq 5 I mentioned earlier include uh, several years free of complimentary DC fast charging. So you might actually have free Electrify America charging with your new car. Um, that depends on the car you have. But even if you don't, the great thing about Electrify America is all of their cars have a credit card reader. So you can actually just come to those stations, plug in your car, and then use the credit card reader to just put in your card. Now, this is going to be the most expensive way to charge because they basically charge you a higher rate for electricity for that convenience. They actually have what's called an Electrify America Pass, which is a $4 monthly subscription. Sounds like a lot, but if you actually charge there at least once a month, it pays for itself. So we'll have a video on this channel as well for setting up Electrify America and whether or not you should get their pass. But if you're going to have another app on your phone, Electrify America is another one of the most common kind of providers of DC fast charging across the country. So really good to have them on your phone. And if you're going to be using them frequently, you might want to set up their pass. But worst case, you can always pull up to any of their stations and use the card terminal to just tap, insert, or swipe your card, depending on what your credit card uh, supports. Uh, then there's a better route planner. So I mentioned PlugShare. PlugShare is a great tool because it'll uh, route you uh, based off your vehicle. A better route planner will do that too. You'll input the vehicle you have, the model, your uh, start point and your destination, and it does a lot of the nice work for you. Uh, so let's do an example here. I'm going to say that I have a um, Chevy Bolt and I'm going to, uh, let's say uh, that model year, I'm going to start it from Boulder, Colorado. Um, to let's say Washington DC. So long trip cross country, let's just say that as a hypothetical example. And let's say that I'm uh, basically starting out with 90% state of charge. I'm gonna then set that up and this, this website, A Better Route Planner will then calculate that. They also have an app on your phone. Uh, so A Better Route Planner commonly abbreviated to ABRP is another great service. I think it goes hand in hand with PlugShare. These are both kind of independent apps you can download that just work really well. PlugShare is good because you can actually see the ratings of stations. It'll tell you uh, based off reviews on a station, if a station is even functioning or let's say it's uh, under repair, PlugShare has usually pretty good status into stations about that. A better route planner is just going to be smart with telling you, like, let's say on this cross country step, uh, on this cross country trip, all the places you're going to want to stop and how long you'll take stopping at them. So because I have a Chevy Bolt in this hypothetical example, I'm going to be spending about uh, 50 minutes at a lot of these stops. It varies, of course, um, you know, depending on how frequent the chargers are in the area of the country I'm at. Uh, but if you have a faster charging electric car, like a Porsche Taycan, a Lucid Air, 
or so on, then you might have shorter charging stops. Uh, but that's kind of software you might want to have in your phone and a minimum charge point uh, and then planning your route with either plug share or better route planner, maybe even using both. And then Electrify America as the other most common charging provider whose app you might want on your phone. Uh, then this brings us to what do you want in your car? What kind of hardware, what kind of you know tools and accessories do you want in your car for your road trip? Well, standard road trip things apply. So food, snacks, you know, I don't have to tell you that. Whatever you need for the trip you, you're taking is great. But electric car specific things are a mobile power cord. This is huge. So uh, if you have a Tesla, well, Tesla actually sells a great one on their site. It comes with everything you need. Uh, and what this is, is basically it's a cable that will plug into a wall to trickle charge your car in an emergency. Let's say there's not a nearby charging station. So you can charge your car from a wall outlet, just a three prong, you know, normal wall outlet. And that's the slowest way to charge your car. But in an emergency, you can do it. Even more ideally, there's the standard called NEMA 1450. If you've never heard of it, I don't blame you, but basically it is a 240 volt connection, twice of the you know normal residential 120 volt connection. NEMA 1450 is used by a lot of appliances, washing machines, uh, things like that, refrigerators, I think. So a lot of uh, residences and businesses have them. So uh, with this, with a mobile connection kit, uh, whether it's from Tesla or Ford sells one uh, that works with a lot of cars too, um, we're not gonna recommend a specific product in this video, but I would recommend just looking one up that's compatible with your car. Uh, if you have a Mach-E from Ford or a Ford Lightning or uh, any other car that's not a Tesla, the Ford one actually is a good one. But uh, let's say you have this, basically it just gives you a fail safe. You can plug into the wall, either with a three-pronged wall outlet or with NEMA 1450 uh, in case you can't find a charger. So this is a super useful thing just to have in the trunk of your car. Most of the time, these are going to be about $200, $300 for a decent one. Uh, and there's plenty of great ones. So I won't endorse any particular model, but just make sure that when you get is compatible with your car and the charging port it takes. The next thing you want to have is another recovery method is a tow strap. You really hopefully don't need this most of the time. It's actually quite difficult to get stranded in an electric car. You're going to get lots of warnings, lots of alerts. But let's say, you know, it's really cold weather. Sometimes the computer systems that estimate the range in the car will say you have two miles of range to get to the next charger. But then all of a sudden the car just shuts down because it's really cold and the battery's got... Um, basically a little bit confused. That can happen. It's rare, doesn't happen all the time, but in case it does, a tow strap is a fairly cheap item to have. So what you can do is just go on a generic auto parts website like AutoZone, input the model of car you have, and make sure you find a compatible tow strap. You're always gonna, I think, benefit by having one of these in your car, fairly low cost, and it basically saves you uh, waiting several hours and having to pay a large towing fee because with this, you know, any good Samaritan, let's say someone driving by with a truck could give you a lift, uh, which could be super helpful. Maybe you only need to get one mile down to the next charging station or to an outlet that you can charge your car at. So this is super helpful to have. One more thing for emergencies that's great to have is a spare. A lot of electric cars for packaging reasons don't come with a spare wheel anymore. Actually, a lot of combustion gas cars also don't come with a spare wheel. It's just becoming less and less common. Some cars do. So if yours already does, that's great. But if you don't see one uh, in the bottom of your, in the, you know, in the hatch under your trunk, uh, then you'll probably will want to get one. It's just great to have. Obviously, it's a spare tire. I don't need to explain that. Um, a great website for this, actually, they're not affiliated with us. They have sponsored out of spec videos in the past, but a great website we personally like to use is Modern Spare. Uh, so modernspare.com, we'll link them. But you put in your car, they make spares for tons of cars. But let's say in this example, I have a Kia EV6, you know, popular electric car uh, from this model year, um, any trim. So I'm going to put that in and just like AutoZone or any auto parts website, this is going to give me a compatible spare. Uh, so it looks like I'm going to be paying somewhere in the kind of $300 zone for a kit. This is going to include a jack and everything. So, you know, great to have a spare if your car already doesn't have one. For electric cars in particular, it's just uncommon because they package batteries and a bunch of other things. And many of them just don't have space for a spare. So if you have the space in your trunk to pack a spare and the budget to get one for your trip, always a great idea to have. The one last thing I want to mention to get prepared for your road trip is actually setting your car up. There's not much you need to do, but, and this may sound fairly obvious, but you might as well start with the highest state of charge you can. Because let's say your car is sitting in your garage overnight, um, you, you might as well charge it to 100%. Now, for daily usage, most electric cars only recommend you charge to 80%. That's basically to protect the health of the battery, 
usually they don't need to go past that. But if you're starting a long road trip, you're going to want to start with as high a state of charge as possible. So go into the settings of your car and your infotainment screen. It'll vary for each car. We'll have videos on the channel for the most popular makes and models. What I have pulled up here is Volvo's page for their cars. You'll go into the charging settings. You're going to find basically the charge limit, and it'll be set to whatever it is. Oftentimes, it is 70 or 80 percent. That's kind of the default for a lot of cars. In the case of this road trip, you're going to want to slide that up, bump it up to 100. Uh, just get your car as you know close to full as you can, just to start the journey. So do that the night before you leave, um, just to make sure that car is fully charged, and then. Also, if your car has battery preconditioning, enable that. Now, this is another setting. Usually, it's buried somewhere within your car's charging settings. Not every electric car has this. If you have a Chevy Bolt, there's no battery preconditioning. If you have a Volvo vehicle, uh, many of those now have battery preconditioning. So do other ones I've mentioned in this episode, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5. Uh, so if your car has battery preconditioning, look that up and enable it, as well as setting that state of charge to 100%. So quick recap. We went over a lot in this video, I know. But what's involved in your checklist? Well, one, is your car road trip ready? If it's a Tesla, most likely it is. Uh, Tesla has been just using the same st charging standard on their cars, and all of their cars have been pretty decent chargers for a while now. So you're probably in good shape with a Tesla. If it's a Nissan Leaf, I'm sorry, you know, you maybe you can do a road trip, but that car is just range constrained and it's not a particularly quick charger. Uh, if you have a Chevy Bolt, that is um, also not a quick charger. But let's say you have a more modern electric car like an Ionic 5, an EV6, a Ford Mustang Mach-E, a Volvo XC40 Recharge, et cetera. There's many models in the market now. You're gonna be in great shape because if your car has this input, uh, in particular, this standard called CCS, then it's ready, great. So next thing to know, what can your car do in a best case scenario? Uh, is your car compatible with these, you know, uh, bleeding edge 800 volt chargers? If it is, Great. If not, that's fine too. 400 volt is still very fast direct current charging that you're going to find the most rapid chargers. Like I said earlier, that's getting you 10 to 80% in usually half an hour uh, in good conditions. Then software. You just want a software on your phone. At a minimum, the ChargePoint app is great to have. Have it set up, get your payment input, uh, get your account set up with them. And then an Electrify America app as well with their pass is another great option. But uh, you can always pay at those stations with your credit card. You're going to want to route your trip with a service like PlugShare or a better route planner that's aware of the vehicle you have. So it's going to have you input your starting point, the vehicle you're driving, and your end destination. And it'll do a lot of work for you in terms of routing you to chargers that are compatible with your car and that are going to get you back on the road as quickly as possible to get to the next charger or to get to your destination. Then hardware in your car, you're going to want that mobile uh, power connector, uh, whether it's the Ford brand one, the Tesla brand one, uh, or any amount of great third-party ones on Amazon. Usually I would expect to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 plus dollars for these, probably not more than $400, but basically this is just a set of adapters and cables in your car uh, that'll help you plug into the wall in case you need it in an emergency. So great to have. Toe strap goes for any car, uh, super useful, fairly cheap, you know, $30, $40. Make sure you get one that's compatible with your car if it has toe points and toe anchors. Um, AutoZone and other websites will let you put in your model and find a compatible tow strap. Then spare tire. If your car doesn't have one already, get a spare tire kit. Modern Spare is a great website that sells them for many models in particular of electric cars. And then lastly, setting your car state of charge the night before to reach 100% so that when it's plugged in on the wall overnight, it does get to 100%. Uh, and if possible, if it has it built into the software, the battery is preconditioned so that the car is in a great um, thermal zone so that when you reach a charger, it can charge at its quickest. Um, so yeah, a bunch of nerdy information, but I hope all of that was super helpful for you planning your first EV road trip. Uh, so as you can tell by all the information I've given you, um, all of this, you know, is takes some planning. It takes more planning than in a gas car. Uh, but you're probably going to end up even with rapid, uh, you know, DC fast charging, which is the most expensive way to charge your electric car. You're realistically probably going to end up paying a lot less than you would for gas on the trip. And hey, you know, there's if you're stopped for 20, 30 minutes, there's worse things to be uh, stopped for, you know, every two or three hours in a road trip. You can walk around, you can go to the store, get some Starbucks eat at a restaurant, et cetera. So hopefully this was all super helpful, but if you have any other questions, do let us know in the comments. There will be um, links to things we've mentioned 
uh, in this video in the description, as well as other videos, uh, uh, tutorials on how to set up all of the charging network apps. We have those on this channel. So if they're ready, they will be linked in this video. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Add a Spec Guide. I've been Max, and I'll see you next time.